Hi guys, today we're looking at an Arkanoid uh, clone. This is a follow-on from the, the Pong tutorial and also the installing Unity in VS Code tutorial. So if you don't have Unity installed, check out the installation video. And if you're new to Unity, I, I suggest taking the Pong tutorial before uh, taking this one. We'll jump straight in. Um, we're using this version, 2019.4.16 F1. That's a long-term support version. I'm going to create a new project. We're going to use the 2D template. And we're going to call this Arkanoid Tutorial. And create. While we're waiting for that to uh, boot up, we'll have a look at what we're aiming for. So this is uh, my representation of what Arkanoid might look like if we for a first time Unity tutorial. So we've got the paddle again at the bottom, uh, very, very similar to Pong, only this time we're moving in the horizontal x-axis. So we want to be able to move in those two directions. We can't move up, we can't move down. We've got a ball. Um, which starts off stuck to the paddle and we want to be able to launch this ball up to break the blocks. The ball is going to bounce off these blocks and it's going to destroy them and different blocks will have for different levels of health. So maybe the green block is a two health, a yellow block just takes one hit to destroy. Um, we'll have multiple levels so we can arrange these blocks in different ways. And then at the top, our heads up display We've got lives, and we've got a score, and we've also got the high score as well, which we're going to have to save somewhere. Um, so that should be persistent uh, across game sessions. Um, I should mention the, the walls. We've got the right wall, top wall, and left wall. So the ball will need to bounce off these, like that. Uh, and then we've got this red wall at the bottom and this will destroy the ball when it hits the bottom. Uh, if you've got no balls in the scene, um, then you'll lose uh, a life. So we also need a game manager. Uh, maybe that's going to be right in the bang middle of the screen. Um, uh, the game session, which keeps our lives, our score, our high score and tracks the number of balls, tracks the number of blocks for winning conditions as well. Um, so let's just go through that again. We've got paddle, ball, blocks, heads up display, we've got the walls, and we've got the game session or game manager. Okay, good. And we're in play. Okay, so we're in a fresh project in Unity. We've got the sample scene and the main camera. This is the 2D template. So if you go to the main camera, Actually, just check the game screen first. We've got our aspect ratio. I'm going to put change that to 16.9. It's a good middle ground um, for your games, 16.9. And then I'm going to change the size of the camera to 9 as well. So that means it will actually be 18 squares along the y-axis and 32 units, I should say, not squares, 32 units across the X axis. Um, okay, so let's go into our scenes and our sample scene. Let's um, first save that sample scene. And then I want to rename this file. So rename that as game scene one. So we know where we are. Reload. Game scene one. Check our main camera. Size is still nine. We're looking good. Okay, so we're back into the scene view. Um, if we double click on the main camera, that gives us the, the view of uh, uh, where our main camera is. And we've got a nice little camera preview there because we've selected the game main, main camera game object. Let's start by creating an empty game object this game object is going to be called block. Can't see anything at the moment so we have to add a component to it. 
and we're going to call that component a sprite renderer. I'm going to add a sprite renderer component. We need a sprite. So let's go into the assets folder, create a new folder. Let's call that sprites. And while we're here, we're going to create another folder. And we're going to call that sounds. Then, if we look on the desktop, by magic, um, we've got a single white pixel. Again, in the Pong tutorial, I tell you how to make this this uh, pixel, single white pixel. But it is what it says on the box. It's a tiny speck of uh, white, a one by one pixel. And we've also got some sounds. Um, I'll give you the download for these sounds in the description below. We specifically want this plop sound. My computer seems to have frozen. So we'll give the sound a skip for now and just go on the single white pixel and drag that into the sprite. Now we should be able to see the sprite, but it's very small. So let's give it a scale of 200 and 100. And let's zoom in on it. So we can see now that that is pretty much one unit by two units. And it sits on the intersection of the grid rather than um, straight within the, the, the actual unit. I think we'll just live with that for now. Um, I actually want to have a bit of a border around my block. So I'm going to change this to 180 and 80 to give us a bit of a border. OK, that's looking good. Um, blocks, the ball will need to bounce into the blocks uh, to destroy them. So we need to add another component. Um, if you want a collision to take place, uh, what component do we need to add? A box collider 2D. And if we click on the edit collider, we can see that perfectly matches the, the sprite. Excellent. So we've got our first game object called block um, with the sprite renderer and a box collider on it. Now, the walls, the paddle, the ball to some extent uh, kind of share these common attributes. So we can just duplicate this block and have a bit of fun. So let's go to the main camera, click on block and hit control D to duplicate. That's called block one. Let's call it uh, top wall. And we'll do the top wall first. Um, we're a hundred for each unit and we know that there's 32 units. Um, so we can say that the uh, X of this should be 3,200 and the Y can just be 100. Um, actually we know the Y position is around 9, let's see where does 9 take us. Let's zoom in on the top wall. Oh, I can't see where the main camera is. So he's not quite appearing on the main camera there. So we want to bring him down a bit. Let's let's have a little bit of a play. Use the uh, transform tool or move tool. So let's say if we have it just there, that's 8.5. So let's type in 8.5 on the Y axis. Great. It doesn't need to be minus 10 on the Z axis. So let's put the Z axis to naught. Let's just go and take a look at our block and we'll put that at naught uh, as well. We don't want that at minus 10. The camera is at minus 10. So we've got the block. We've got the top wall. Let's right click this time to duplicate the top wall. And let's rename that to bottom wall. Now we could drag this down and place it again, but I'm just going to guess that um, minus 8.5 is where we want to be. 
zoom out to our main camera. So we've got a top wall and a bottom wall. Next thing we need is two side walls. So let's control D to duplicate the bottom wall and call this a side wall. Um, so on the Y axis, we want to go back to zero. On the X scale, we want to go back to 100. On the Y scale, we can do maths, we can, we can figure it out. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the scale tool. Ah, sorry, that's gone to zero. I wonder what happened there. Double click our main camera to zoom out. We're going to actually use the scale tool to get a rough guess and then we can see actually we want one thousand eight hundred um, the X and Y have got a little bit messed up with doing that so we'll put those back on the X axis um, we know that the X axis is 16 so let's go to 15.5, that's perfect. Control D to duplicate. I've just realized I've called this side wall. I want to call this one left wall. And we'll go to minus 15.5. And we'll just rename this one. You can press F2 to rename. Call this right wall. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to move them around so the left wall's first and right wall second. And um, we can do a bit of tidy up here as well. So we can create another empty. Let's get rid of that minus Z again. And we're going to call this walls. And we'll hit shift to select all of the walls and then drag them in to that walls game object. And now we can tidy that away in our hierarchy so we can't see it anymore. And in fact, while we're here, let's create another empty. So we're super organized and call this one blocks. And then get our block and drag it down so it belongs in the blocks game object. And again, we can, we can tidy it up. Okay, while we're on the block, let's control and duplicate that block. I'm going to call this block paddle. And we're going to tag it as player. We could create a tag paddle and use paddle again, but I prefer using player because this is a one player game um, and the tag's already there, so why not? Um, scale on the x axis, let's try 400. Scale on the y axis, let's bump that up to 100. Let's get rid of the z10, the z0. And on the Y axis, let's use the move tool. If you click on this square, you can move it in all kinds of different ways. Control Z to go back. If you click on this arrow, then you can just do it on the Y axis. Actually, while we're here, I want to turn on grid snapping. So toggle grid snapping on and off, available when you set tool handle rotation to global. Local, global, local, global. OK, we can turn it on now. And now when we grab it, it actually snaps to the grid. Yeah, we'll give it a little bit of clearance over the bottom wall. So we've got our four walls all nicely um, nested within a walls object. We've got a block and we've got our paddle. Let's bump that up there to the top. So it's not under the, the, the blocks game object. Um, let's go into our block. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's expand our sprite renderer color. And we're going to color this first block yellow. Okay. So what are we missing? We're missing a ball. So I think that's our, our next thing. We're just going to create an empty game object. We're going to call that ball. We're going to 
hit those three dots and we're going to reset position so get rid of that Z thing again we're going to add a component sprite renderer and we're going to choose knob let's change the color to blue let's drag it down so we can see it, it's very small at the moment let's try 5 by 5 wow that's perfect and just place that on top of the paddle, brilliant then we want to add another component um, we want a collider but this time we want a circle collider 2D and if we zoom into ball by double clicking on it in the hierarchy we can see oh, maybe it's a little bit too big let's say 0 0.9 yeah I like, I like that 0 0.09 so we've got a circle collider and we've got a sprite renderer um, we want this to move I wonder if we search for move, nothing. Um, what we need is a rigid body 2D. Sorry if I beat you to it there to actually move an object. So let's add a rigid body 2D. Excellent. While we're here, it's dynamic. Um, we want the ball to start without being simulated. So we're going to turn simulation off now. I'll tell you, I'm going to forget we've done that and uh, mess up the game. Uh, well, when we come to scripting everything, but um, you can remind me, shout at the screen. Oh, you tick simulated off, that's why it's not working. Mass, we'll give it a very small mass. Gravity scale, we'll give it a very small gravity scale. And the reason we're doing that is in case it gets stuck bouncing horizontally on the screen, we want it to slowly move down, 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 down. Um, we don't want it to get stuck perpetually in a horizontal bounce. Linear drag zero, angular drag zero into constraints and we'll constrain on the z-axis and leave it free on the x and y axis let's take another look at our screen and we'll have a look at the paddle the paddle also needs to move remember we're, we're moving along the x-axis left and right so we need to add a rigid body 2d again this one is simulated make sure that's ticked mass one that's fine angular drag zero gravity scale zero we can freeze rotation on the z-axis and we can also freeze position on the y-axis so we're only moving on the x-axis okay so we've got our walls our blocks we've got a ball let's move that further up and we've got a paddle um, so that's it for the setup of the Arkanoid tutorial uh, next time we'll be looking at the, how to add the scripts to these uh, game objects and to get the game working. Thanks very much. See you soon.